this material. <laughs> that is gonna have trouble in the overhead storage compartment. Sorry about that. All right, hello everyone. Right. Welcome to the Hasbro Star Wars panel at San Diego! Yes! All right, we are so excited to be here with you guys today. First off, we're gonna introduce ourselves. So I'm Sarah Carroll, Hasbro Star Wars Marketing Director, and this is? I'm Vicki Stratford, Design Director for Star Wars. Hi, I'm Chris Dern. I'm Product Manager with uh, Lucasfilm. Woo! Special guest. Sam Smith, Design Manager. Tom Rigo, Sculpting Manager. Stephen Gilbert, Working on Marketing. All right. All right, so we know that um, one of the reasons why you guys are here today on our panel is we love to talk about our great exclusives that we have at San Diego. Um, these were revealed earlier this year at Celebration. We're so excited about them. They're in our booth right now. And first up, we want to talk about what is arguably the coolest bounty Very hunter cool. in the galaxy. Right? Who is it? Yeah. Yes? Yes? All right. All right. Woo. In addition, I think it might be the coolest exclusive at the con because Ooh. this is our number one, I believe. It's, it's very. Ah, look at that. Going great. Um, so this is our 40th anniversary of Boba Fett um, released in his original Kenner colors. So originally Boba Fett came out in 1979. I see him right there. Woo! Love it. Yeah. Represent. Uh, beautiful. Uh, the figure itself was a debut, so he came out on the original Star Wars A New Hope card back. Um, but we wanted to sort of use that as a great way to kind of tether into a nice anniversary for the character. We did a little bit of a treatment to the armor, so it fits right in with the Black Series line. In addition to including his E11 rifle, which is a, kind of a homage to the original figure. All right. All right. So next up, as we know, we're wrapping up the Skywalker Saga in 2019, so we wanted to celebrate that by offering a few Lukes from across the line in our three and three quarter inch vintage collection line in our known special action figure set packaging. Uh, so Sam, if you want to take it away on some yeah. features of these guys. So three much needed, my very desirable Lukes in the line. We have our uh, Stormtrooper Luke, who's going to be slightly shorter than your storm standard Stormtrooper <laughs> uh, by way of a newly... I know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> By way of a newly scoped up <laughs> upper torso, <laughs> as well as a new belt with his grappling hook on the side. Uh, it does have an all-new sculpted helmet, as well as a brand new portrait. Uh, take advantage of that photo reel likeness. Uh, in addition to that, we do have Jedi Luke uh, from Return of the Jedi, as he appears uh, in Jabba's palace and aboard uh, Jabba's skiff. Uh, he does feature two uh, correctly sculpted and flesh hands, not gloved. Uh, as well as an updated photoreal portrait uh, with a new head and correct soft goods to the character. And lastly, we have an all new, 100% uh, newly tooled uh, vintage collection X Wing Luke, um, which is a beautiful figure, very much in need of an update, so we're thrilled to uh, get this one into the line. Uh, next up, a special item that we have. This is our prototype edition Vader. As the name states, it kind of plays homage to our prototype process that we go to, go through. Um, so this is actually based on our retro sculpt that we did for the Vader line in the retro collection that just launched this past year. That's a nice expansion on that. As you can see, there's actually four different figures that you can get in this with various colors on the torso, head, arms, and legs. Um, so it's a really cool figure that we were able to do and also allowed us a chance to play with the packaging and kind of use some Lucas reference and style guide for some retro packaging. So that's actually just like a little twist on a Vader um, package art that you see there. It's very much 1980s Warhol inspired. Um, just note, if you do are looking for this item, it's not for sale at the Hasbro booth. It's at Entertainment Earth booth 2343 uh, if you're looking for that figure. All right. So who's excited for the rise of Skywalker? Yeah! We are too. Um, and we know that Disney and Lucasfilm have so much more coming um, towards the end of the year with Triple Force Friday. We're not going to talk about this today, so we're we just sorry. want to get that out there. We're sorry. Um, we can't talk about it today, but we can talk about the early release announcement made earlier this month of the new Sith Trooper and our figure. Right, so that's uh, our brand new episode nine trooper was announced earlier this month and it is red hot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh <laughs> yes, I totally went for that, sorry. Uh, <laughs> this is, a, is an exclusive Black Series six inch figure available here at San Diego Comic-Con. Um, Hasro is super excited to be part of the early release uh, for the Rise of Skywalker and Sam's gonna break this down Ooh. for us. Ooh. Yeah, oh, look at that. Yeah. Man, look at 
represent right here. <laughs> I'm Ann. Seeing a theme here. All right, uh, if you want to just progress He's not a to plant, the next by the way. slide. <laughs> to the next slide. Next slide. Awesome. All right, so starting off with the packaging, our uh, Sith Trooper here is going to come in a convention exclusive package. Uh, this time a little bit differently than something we've done before. Actually has a full armor, armor garrison that kind of uh, slides out underneath the packaging there to reveal a number of new weapons for uh, this character to wield. Uh, so great troop builder. We have a nice little army of these uh, down in the booth, uh, which certainly check out if you haven't gotten a chance. Um, but we'll hop to the figure itself. Uh, so this figure was a blast to work on. It is a great new armor variant for the film. Um, you know, something we see a lot of influence from the First Order uh, design, but also just taking into consideration a lot of the, uh, the asymmetry and sort of trooper variations that we've seen in past years before. Uh, so then making it really unique and kind of tethering it to this, the Sith specifically, I think would have to be the fact that it's red. Red is a color of Sith. Oh, all right, oh. just a little bit. A little bit. So he's got a little bit of red peppered into the armor there, uh, but it's a, it's really a beautiful new design, and uh, we're thrilled to get this range of articulation into this trooper. Here you can see it outfitted with some of the other weapons here. Um, so we have both uh, we have both blasters as well as some great melee weapons for the character to wield. Yeah, we're so excited about this that we are actually giving away this fantastic poster in our booth featuring our Sith, uh, Sith Trooper figure. Um, it's going to be in the Hasbro booth, and if you come by tomorrow around 1230, you can come by and get one of your very own. All right. And as we know, these are, we have fans all over the globe, so what we are doing, again, as we've typically done, is exp expanding these uh, convention exclusives out across the globe. Um, as you can see here, this is all the different conventions that we'll be offering these exclusives at. Um, just note D23 will have the Sith Trooper, um, only out of the items that you've seen, but all these other ones through Paris Comic Con all the way over to Barcelona, we're going to have global representation. So if you're at any of those, have no fear, you'll be able to get your product there. All right. So next up, we're going to hop over to Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures. Who's a fan of Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures? Yeah? We are. Um, so this is a great series of shorts that launched last fall on the brand new Star Wars Kids YouTube channel. And it celebrates really those key moments in Star Wars history and key characters and stories. Um, let's, take a clip to, let's take a quick look at a clip. Don't mess with a Wookiee. <laughs> so we also launched some great three and three quarter figures uh, last year in these really colorful tubes with bright packaging and comics to bring the story to life. Uh, yeah, actually, um, when we first heard about uh, the Galaxy of Adventures from Lucasfilm, the team really reacted quickly to get these figures out. And we put in with them a great comic book that goes in with the figures and to really help kids understand about how great these iconic characters from the Star Wars universe are. Right. Right. But um, you know what, we really thought that there was more that we could do with the animation here. Uh, it was so cool, so fresh, and so clearly kid-targeted that we thought, wow, what if this could actually inspire us to, to create some new, um, a new expression of action figures for kids? And so we took a look at that. Yes. Tom helped us out with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we started exploring different uh, style explorations to see, you know, get something fresh in a line, something exciting, you know, and uh, so this... What you see on the left is what we started with, and then what was cool was, at the same time, Chris previewed some of the GOA shorts for us, and we were amazed at how similar these styles mesh. On the right, you'll see the, the GOA uh, control art. And so then we started working closely together and just figured out a way to meld these two styles together. And uh, so then we came up with, the next slide, you'll see the, 
the helmet. Ours was on the left, the GOA is on the, on the right. And then we just kind of meshed it together and I think we came to a, you know, a pretty happy medium there. Uh, do we do okay, Chris? They actually turned out fantastic. It's a great <laughs> stylization to, uh, we, I don't want to say kid only because these look fantastic uh, right okay. next to the Black Series collection in our offices. So they, they are awesome and they follow along with the Galaxy of Adventure storylines that are coming out. If you guys haven't seen the Galaxy of Adventure shorts, there are quite a few on the site now, and they're awesome. If you're a longtime fan, and maybe you grew up with it like some of us up here, <laughs> they, it is such a fresh new way to show our stories using the voices and the, obviously the, the music that we know and love, but to see it in this stylization is just something fresh and new, and we're really excited about this. Let's so yeah, like, so I mean, we, again, we, we were really proud with the way this all came out. It's, it's not just, you know, it's not just for kids like Chris mentioned though. It's, I think it's something that I would definitely collect. Like, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing your reaction when you get to see it up close. But um, yeah, when you check out the next slide. So let's check it out. So that's the finished product and yeah. All right, what do you guys think? Pretty good? Did we do all right? Mm -hmm. These are awesome. <laughs> cool. These also feature, like I said, they're not just feature based. They have over 24 points of articulation. You can get these things into pretty much any pose you want. And they pose out really nicely. Yeah, so, so and <clears throat> we, we say that they um, have the articulation to do anything a kid wants to do with them, right? And they've got a great action figure uh, feature in them. So they're, you know, stand at five inches tall. Vader has a great uh, feature where he's got a spring-loaded waist. You just pull it back, and he'll do an awesome s slash <laughs> to take down the enemies. All right, so next. these are for kid and fans of life. They <laughs> came out. See, they're fans getting better. Fans are allowed to slash <laughs> their figures down too, right? Um, next is our uh, uh, Chewbacca, and as you already saw, he's known to be chucking guys around. So <laughs> we literally spring-loaded his arms, and you can get a figure up on there and whoo, chuck that guy across the table, just like you know you want to. And he's got his awesome bowcaster. Next is the you know the biggest scoundrel in the galaxy, Han Solo, and he features, of course. A quick draw. You'll have to decide for yourself who shot first. <laughs> but uh, he does have the feature. Just pull his arm back, and he blasts away. And you know, we've even got this great droid expression. <laughs> and you know, and how many of you guys like C-3PO, right? Well, you know, he's not really known for his emotional stability, so we kind of brought that into the feature here. And if you push on his back hard enough, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> He's literally, arms and legs will pop off, and then you can put them all back together and do it again and again. Now, that's what we're talking about as far as really having those fun kid features. The kids got to have great things to do with them, and that really inspires the storytelling. And how did play. you guys pitch this, if I recall? You were like, how can we make an action figure that falls apart? What? <laughs> and it's we, just a flesh wound. Yeah, we're like, uh, okay, but it is very cool. So you hit the button on the back, and he blows apart. It's very, very cool. So in a very 3PO fashion. Now, these are the figures that we were able to share with you guys today. But just to be clear, we have a very diverse lineup of figures coming that will be launching this fall. So stay tuned to see more on that later. All right. And uh, Vicki, do you want to tell them a little bit more about our three and three quarter? Oh, yes, I do, as All a matter right. of fact. So um, these are the five-inch figures. But you know, we, whenever we launch a new figure expression, we often hear from fans, well, what's going on with three and three quarter inch? So, we just want to say we will continue with vintage and retro to be kind of the home of the three and three quarter inch figure expressions. So speaking of retro. Speaking of retro, we launched the retro figure line earlier this year and it's doing really well. You guys love them, so thanks. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, so the retro figures, as you know, are replicas of the iconic 1970s um, original figures in retro packaging. Um, the original sculpts and great packaging with a little weathering on them. Um, but before we get into those details, let's take a look at what inspired this line. It's just me, watch out! And he's got a lightsaber! It's Kenner's Star Wars action figures, each sold separately. I got you now, thank you. With R2-D2 and C-3PO, there's even Chewbacca and Han Solo. Who's there? Like it. It's Chris Light and Luke Skywalker. Now I know the force will be with us. Don't figure R2D2 is safe. 
Come on, who remembers? <laughs> Those kids did a great job, I think. Um, so as you can see here, a lot of the great packaging and figures that we brought out earlier this year. We also released the Escape from the Death Star game from the 1980s, but with a little bit of a twist, um, with an all-new retro-inspired Tarkin figure on card back. Um, so we know a lot of these went fast, but we are gonna be having some stock later this year, um, so stay tuned for that. All right, so now we're gonna hop over to the World of Black series. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> and one of our favorite chapters. So can you guys believe it? It's been, 2020 marks the 40th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back. How is it already here? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so we're all really excited and we know that a lot of fans um, consider this one of their favorite chapters. So let's take a look at what happens in a galaxy far, far away. gives me goosebumps. Um, so we wanted to share with you the results of our fan vote. We showed this in February at New York Toy Fair when we announced that we were going to do a fan vote for Black Series 6 inch um, to celebrate the 40th anniversary. And it was a close one, but Luke Skywalker, Dagobah won. Um, so we're going to have the team talk through what, what we're going to do with that fan vote information. <laughs> Yeah, so you're going to get your first look at the sculpt. It's in uh, pretty much, it's in progress, and we're developing it now. But yeah, this is the, on the left, you see the part breakdown. It's in, incorporated all the latest uh, articulation that we've been adding, like the butterfly joints, the triple neck, including some other things in there as well. But yeah, it's a pretty, I think the figure came out pretty good. So it's, um, we're happy. You, you did okay. Thanks, it's, 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 uh, <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> All right, so we've got a 360 view for you here. Tom, it's magical. <laughs> right, so and I think this was definitely one where like the figure presented a number of challenges for the character, especially just in terms of, you know, treating a figure and without having uh, actually sleeves on it is presents quite a bit of a challenge. So I think something that we really tried to be able to do was, you know, be able to have as flawlessly uninterrupted of a a limb there and really be able to uh, you know, celebrate this as Luke without having too many of the uh, visuals uh, distracted by. Yeah, and I think we, you know, the range of motion on like the elbow there you see, we're happy with the result there, but when it's in its neutral pose, it still feels very accurate anatomically. So again, that's the kind of thing we keep striving for constantly, keeping the aesthetic, but getting the maximum range of motion. All right, so that brings us to our diorama. Have you guys been to the booth yet to see our diorama this year? Everybody? Yeah. All right. Wow. That was <laughs> exhausting. So we had, a, we had a little bit of a thing, uh, uh, wow, year, near Toy Fair, a year ago, uh, we revealed a little project called HasLab. Uh, this is, I might just cut out. Um, but this was a little bit of a project that we did. Uh, it was great because it was in collaboration with you, the fans. It was our first crowdfunded HasLab item, and it was done to great success. It was back to over 175%. So thank you for making this come true. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Yeah. It was a dream come true for many of us. Mm -hmm. It was a dream for come true for many of you, I'm sure. Um, but Including Mark Boudreau. Able Mark to, uh, Love this thing. <laughs> to bring that vehicle to life was, uh, was huge. And ultimately, it inspired us to do a lot of great product in support of that. So if you hop to the next slide, we had 
a couple of items that, again, only really happened because of uh, the success of the barge. Uh, so being able to add a few more of those skip guards to the barge itself uh, by way of Vidane, Vizam, and uh, Brock Starsher uh, independently on their vintage card back on the next, next one. one. <laughs> Build. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and then being able to, um, you know, really pose that out with a nice companion vehicle. So prior to this, we only had the Kenner release of the, uh, the skiff, which was a little bit out of scale, and we had something to really scale it up towards. So being able to put the, uh, the skiff collection uh, by way of the vintage collection was huge, and being able to you know, truly scale it uh, to the vehicle as well as bringing in all the great detail and you know, weathering it exactly to the barge. So they share the same whole color as well as all the uh, environmental weathering. So this is truly a companion piece to the barge. So if you have one or if you don't, this is <coughs> certainly a lovely piece to have or two in your collection. Yeah. Um, but, you know, kind of as a, a nice thank you to this, it was uh, really inspired us to uh, put together this year's diorama. We're not necessarily in, um, um, at the point of Empire Strikes Back, so we weren't working on the diorama for this one yet. Uh, but it was awesome to be able to, if you want to hop Let's into see. some of these progressive slides, just give you guys a little bit of a behind the scenes of uh, what we put together. So this was an accelerated project. We did oh, this yeah. uh, in three weeks. Oh um, my gosh. But it was uh, a lot of fun, a lot of late nights, but ultimately this is a passion-driven brand and uh, we have a passionate group working on it. So here you can kind of see just a, a look behind the scenes of how this is constructed. At its core, it was a MDF uh, Premature with uh, masonite um, kind of ribbing, and then we sort of created the the whole dune out of a pressed uh, uh, mesh. Mesh, yep. And then we covered it with uh, with a resin, and then once that was cured, we topped that with real sand and mixed with water and glue, and that's how we got the effect for for the sand dunes. <coughs> Next. And it's kind of the showpiece of the uh, <laughs> the diorama. There, they all kind of come to. Uh, come to join a, around a, a singular part. So, uh, you know, having that Sarlacc pit out in the, in the desert at the uh, Pit of Carcoon was a, you know, huge piece. And just getting a, you know, a little bit of behind the scene. Oh, and there it is, kind of all together. Um, so this was, again, a, a huge, uh, huge achievement for uh, the vintage collection, really being able to show that. But, you know, we have some six inch fans in the room too. Mm -hmm. So we also wanted to uh, do a little bit with that. So. Yeah, so you know, we started building the interior of Java's palace, as you can see, just out of pink foam, just old school, traditional, you know, hand carving, cutting, and and yeah, then we took that, covered it with um, what do you call it, grout, and painted it up, and yeah, there we have Eric Craner who helped uh, help with that as well. Um, this was fun. We also challenged our laser cutter a little bit and put some heavy duty insulation oh. foam in it and asked for forgiveness later when <laughs> it may or may not have caused this. That always works out great. <laughs> <laughs> and the team really got into this. You know, just saying. So uh, there's quite a bit of depth to the, uh, the cavity beneath um, Jabba's palace. Yeah, there, you can lay in it. Uh, it's ultimately, not comfortable. it's nap worthy. Yeah, I'm well. pretty sure we found Alexa sleeping a couple yeah, of times. Yeah, slacker. <laughs> um, but you know, being able to to really be able to uh, outfit that with uh, as much detail as uh, you know we could, and making sure that we had that rock sculpture all the way back. Uh, and of course, with lighting was another fun project mm -hmm. we had here. Um, so kind of, I think it was rather last minute. We decided we wanted to uh, go back in and really uh, kind of um, amplify a lot of these great lighting effects. So being able to have the, uh, the grating in the floor illuminate the orange uh, on the trophy wall and having that heavy spotlight above the, uh, the uh, kind of gateway to the, uh, the Rancor pit. Um, and then ultimately having a nice sort of tethered lighting throughout and kind of that showpiece with the throne room. But there's a bit more to the basement of Java's yeah, Palace. Yeah, <laughs> missing something. Now, this was something we were really excited to do. It's something we've been wanting to do, and we had an excuse now to do it, was our little baby Rancor. And <laughs> <laughs> Tom coddled that thing an awful lot. I love lot. that thing. Oh, he's <laughs> a nurturer. 
<laughs> raised, raised from, from just a hatchling, but it's enormous. A rancor in a six inch scale is like 19 and a half inches tall. Um, it is gigantic. It is a menace. Everyone thought we were carrying a gremlin down the hallway when we had this thing in loose pieces. So that was uh, a blast to see, but you get to see uh, so kind of cute. the assembly and just how beautifully that thing photographs. So this was definitely a lot of fun to be able to uh, to work on again. It was really just something we wanted to do to, as a great engagement for you guys here at the convention. So enjoy, this was for you. And as we've shared with a lot of you there, I mean, that uh, display changes every day. So we're progressing the story, oops, excuse me, progressing the story in Java's Palace at the Pit of Carcoon. So each day there's a new stage to it. So if you've seen it once, you're missing it. Yeah, that stop by the booth and geek out with these guys. I would say so, uh, Tom and Sam and um, Kim is here. Is she in the room, Kim? Kim, Kim, Kim raise your hand. Yeah. Come on, Kim. She's hiding. There she's there. there. Stand up, Kim. Yeah. Good job, Painter. Painter. Kim doesn't just make us look good at last minute all nighter uh, San Diego Comic Con diorama. She makes us look good every day. Mm. She really does amazing work on um, all the figures and is one of our key team members for um, making the, the figures look amazing. So good job, Kim. So stop by and tell her. All right, <laughs> all right so that was our diorama. Next up, we're going to talk about Hyperreal. Yes. So as you guys all know, in February at New York Toy Fair, we launched Hyperreal Darth Vader. Uh, this is our new 8-inch scale premium action figure that we're able to do, featuring the endoskeleton with the dermis on top, allowing us for the most posability we've had out of any figure. Um, this is... A, when you feel this figure and you actually get the figure in your hand, if it's heavy, it feels great, and it's able to reach an, as many poses as you want this thing to do. And uh, what's even better is the packaging itself. Once this unfolds out, um, it reveals all the sets of hands Vader has, along with the Force Blast. Um, and also packed out in there, you might see uh, the, the base that was inspired from the uh, Carbonite Freezing Chamber. But as everybody knows, there might have been a little battle that was done in the Carbonite Freezing Chamber. Um, so, Sam? That's correct. Yeah. So we have had a lot of questions for this. I think we've teased at it enough, but we uh, finally have a uh, companion to fight Vader to show with you today. Uh, so that's going to be Luke Skywalker Hyper Reel. Um, so Luke Skywalker yeah, in his cool. Vespin fatigue. So this is uh, and presenting an, another kind of huge challenge for Hyper Reel. So again, just being able to actually treat this figure with, um, you know, actually doing something humanoid. When we did Vader, it's a mass character and, you know, a lot of mass and bringing that up to its real large scale. With Luke, we're presented with new challenges in terms of being able to do uh, actually a humanoid character with human hands and really being able to not have armor details to hide a lot of those breaks. So you'll find that there's no, art no actual seams to the outfit. It is uh, complete, has a his iconic DL-44 blaster, his lightsaber, has eight swappable hands and actually has two alternate portraits. So being able to swap the heads onto the character and then have that great companion stand to pair off against your Vader. All right. And this item is actually going to be available for pre-order on Saturday um, starting around 5.30 p.m. So keep an eye out for that and it's going to be launching in 2020. And we're still on track for Vader in, uh, to ship in August. Um, and also, for anyone that I told in the past couple days that we had no hyper real plans, and sorry, I lied to you. <laughs> My parents taught me not to lie, but they also told me to get a job, so I figured that was important to keep as well. Uh, so we had to keep this one under wraps. Uh, the last point we're going to get to in Black Series here is um, diving into some of our premium role play helmets. Um, as you know, we launched this in 2015 with uh, Kylo Ren, and we've only been able to get better featuring the Poe Dameron X-Wing helmet along with the Darth Vader, which kind of was the first one where he put in, you know, the three-piece assembly with magnetics and kind of really were able to offer that premium role-play helmet to the fans. And we followed that up this past February when we launched the X, when we announced the Luke Skywalker X-Wing helmet, which will be coming this fall. Um, so this is the best, mo most movie accurate helmet that we've been able to do. Um, so Sam, if you want to take everyone through a little bit of the background behind the helmet itself. Yeah, so this was um, a helmet that we've been uh, getting a lot of buzz around uh, doing. Um, the great thing about it is really going back and doing a classic hero helmet from 40 years ago. So really having a, a nice companion piece to uh, the, kind of the first classic helmet that we would have done, which was Vader. Um, so for the Luke helmet here, we'll just take you a little bit behind the scenes of uh, kind of the construction with this. Um, the helmet itself, you know, we work really clo closely with Lucasfilm here to sort of gather that uh, 
available input and really just finding out a little bit more history about the helmet itself and sort of understanding how the, uh, the original movie prop was constructed because that's all stuff that we look to take into consideration when um, actually putting these helmets together. Um, and so you can see here, it's sort of we, um, a lot of what we do in terms of a sculpting environment is being able to work on this digitally um, to just bring in all the details, ensuring that we have everything correctly. And if you progress to the next slide here, ensuring that it fits a wide variety of heads. Yeah, um, when they need to test the max head size, this is the guy they go to. So yeah. can confirm this will fit snugly. <laughs> so a lot like the original uh, vacuum-formed helmet uh, that was used in the film, we really wanted to preserve a lot of that detail and uh, you know not have to make modifications to account for undercuts and how this might traditionally be tooled. So breaking this out into an individual left and right side to be able to uh, uh, pull these helmet. Um, oh, actually, you can hop right back. Uh, and then uh, allowing those to join under the central mohawk, in addition to actually outfitting it with a completely uh, texturized uh, interior, which really the, the film didn't um, necessarily get to showcase and go into it. It's something that's important to us with helmets, which is comfort. Um, so being able to hop to the next one now, uh, <laughs> kind of giving a little bit of an early look in terms of uh, this is the digital uh, paint processing we, process that we uh, look at putting together, which just sort of showcases the clean, uh, weathered, and then sort of like a complex color separation so that we can really <laughs> see kind of how that color is getting maximized on the, the helmet itself, um, as well as a little bit of a behind the scenes of that helmet uh, as it was being painted by Kim as well. Mm, Kim. Uh, and that we do have a pretty involved uh, weathering process as well as uh, generating sort of the files that we utilize on the helmet, ensuring that um, you know all, everything is weathered and sort of feel. There's no real factory finish when it comes to the Rebel Alliance. So you know, being able to go back and chip stuff away and really make it feel as though this was a you know a helmet from 40 years ago. Uh, and then as we get into the soft goods interior of this helmet, we did something really new to this, which was go to a premium soft goods. We have a quilted um, padded interior uh, that's lined with a top as well as ear pads. has a premium uh, aluminum uh, microphone boom and then just that uh, really nice uh, translucent visor uh, to kind of maximize the play feature for this helmet. And then it's just give you guys a quick look. I don't know if you've seen the packaging for this one. So this is... Just a quick shot of the box here, and that final assembly there. So. This is a really nice yeah. helmet, right? Yeah. Come see it in our booth. We have, yeah. a, we have one down there. Yeah, yeah, they're there. So yeah, so this is the most movie accurate helmet that we have done to date. Or? It was. It was? It was. Wait, huh? Did you get the memo? Well, so this, tell. as we've, we've shared numerous times, guys, this is our number one most yeah. fan requested hero helmet. Yes. Hero it is. helmet. And we're we're all really hero excited about it. Yeah, it's awesome. Hero? And don't you guys have also asked it. for a very specific helmet vocally a lot for years. Who? A lot. Who? And here it is. <laughs> hero helmet. Oh. This is it. Yeah, no. So moving to our number one most fan requested helmet should, should of we, all time. Should we move to that now? Oh. Yeah. yeah. You're breaking okay. up a little theme here. <laughs> So, we'll take you guys on a little bit of a journey that we had the pleasure of doing. Tom, myself, and Chris Stern, uh, we visited a little bit of an archive for the Lucasfilm. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. It was time well spent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very hospitable. Um, there are tons of things we would love to show you, but we are sworn to NDAs and secrecies of why we cannot do that. But we were Chris uh, is given a little bit of a, uh, we were Those given a little bit of a pulled. green light to give you guys a glimpse into something that we've been working on. We're very excited to show you. Um, so something that we constantly have been striving with our helmets is to really bring that level of authenticity, that level of accuracy, and especially in terms of being able to take these helmets to the next level. Uh, we went underway and did this for our Boba Fett helmet. Yeah, so we utilized the you know, state-of-the-art scanning technology. We, uh, I think it was over 40 individual shots to, to get each angle, get everything in that helmet as, you know, as tight as possible, get the resolution you know, 
again, as tight as possible. Here you have Chris and Sam discussing Deco, which was, uh, again, painstakingly combed through through the Pantone books. Either, we were actually either. talking about lunch right there. We, oh. it, it was <laughs> like, okay, we're like, do you they want a hamburger or not? The best it, sandwiches and the Wagyu beef. Oh my <laughs> but it was incredible. And again, like this process, it was unbelievable the, to understand how many Boba Fett helmets there actually were across two movies and kind of all the th different things. So in terms of like finding that right helmet was a mm -hmm. lot like the uh, Last Crusade, I'd say. And it was just sort of like, <laughs> nope. And the, and the nice thing is, the nice thing, this, this helmet was actually available for us to do. It was, it was available for the scanning process that we went through. I mean, a lot of these things, a lot of these archival pieces are, are traveling around the globe for people to see in different various shows all over. And it was actually in our archive and available for us to go and, and do this and, and capture the most accurate uh, shell yeah. and scan of it. So it was great. So if we just hop to the next one. We pulled every detail off this helmet. We calculated every color. We double checked every measurement to ensure that as we brought this back into a digital environment, what we'd be able to deliver was ultimately the same prop that we handled there. Look at your Pantone ship. Get that color right. That's the right color right there. Jim, is that right? <laughs> and so here you can kind of see just a side by side comparison on the. Um, on the left-hand side of the screen is actually the raw scan data. Uh, and as we actually translate that to a physical product, you can see our one-to-one -one scale. We did not change a proportion on this helmet at all. It is the exact size of the original 1979 Joe Johnson helmet prop. And I think here you can see uh, just a little bit of that breakdown for the helmet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we Broke them down, uh, you know, according to, to color. So you'll see on the bottom left, too, there's a nice cushioned material as well that will help, you know, make the fit feel nice. Um, and we, yeah, even broke it down with the prop. You can see the different segments that are, that are included. So some of that is, is reflected here as well. Um, yeah. And we put a lot of paint on it. There's a lot of paint on Boba Fett's helmet. And when he uh, says a lot of paint... He this means. is a record setting number of paint applications that we've done. I'd say the only thing in the Star Wars universe that we have done that this rivals is the sail barge. Mm -hmm. um, so we were uh, thrilled to be able to put this detail. In terms of the sculpt, again, as Tom was mentioning, you know, accuracy was a huge part of this. And just being able to ensure that you know, seams were hidden by the natural breaks of the helmet and had a similar assembly to the, uh, the real prop and a little bit of a uh, inspired interior um, just to be able to bring that uh, influence that we've seen through great things in terms of publishing as well as a lot of the Mandalorian stuff that's been done with animation to really be able to outfit that as like a, a factory form uh, Mandalorian helmet. So, so a, lot of, a lot of work you can see went into this <laughs> and you, you can hear how Sam is explaining this that as a designer he was very very happy that we didn't really have to change the shape of the helmet. For functionality purposes, for toy manufacturing purposes, sometimes you have to go in and engineer things so they function well for everybody to wear and have a great experience. But this one is one of the most accurate ones we've ever done. Absolutely. I would say the scariest moment of this helmet was bringing it to Steven's office. <laughs> We have marketing hands. What do you want? You, know, you never know what's going to drop. And making For sure that it fit his head. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you make it fit. That's the kind of drama that unfolds at the Hasbro office. So you guys right. want to take a look at it? Steven's head. Yeah. You want to see what it looks like? No? No? All right. Okay, there it is. Oh, here we go. Right. Uh, All right, so here you can see the exterior, and we can slowly pan through a couple of these shots here. Um, again, really just came out uh, to be a beautiful representation of this helmet. Everything in terms of paint depth was captured in a multi-dimensional sculpt, so lots of the different layering is actually captured in the sculpt itself, and then just being able to apply all those layers of paint and weathering to the helmet to really be able to bring that um, you know, film authentic look to life. What does everyone think? Yeah. Are you as excited as we are about this one? But wait, there's more. 
So we also wanted to give it a feature. It can't just be a helmet. We don't just <laughs> make helmets. So it has a functioning rangefinder. So with the press of the button that's hidden nicely into the side of the helmet, uh, the rangefinder does descend down, which activates the tracking lights. Uh, will uh, alternate on the outside. And as to the viewer there, you have an edge lit illuminated heads up <laughs> display, uh, which you can use to augment uh, your bounty tracking. So this was a really fun, uh, again, way to make uh, make an awesome spin. You're that almost got more ooze. There. They got more ooze for that than <laughs> the traditional <laughs> visual. I'm like, And then again, just sort of being able to showcase here. that interior. Again, we really wanted to make this as uh, fit a large range of heads. So um, it does have an adjustable strap um, for various head sizes. Uh, and the option to remove that entirely if you want, as well as it's lined with a soft TPR uh, rubber backing for all of those indentations on the back, so it really becomes a comfortable. It actually has surprisingly like the greatest uh, view. Visibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> it's That's not GOT, one. by the way. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> but neither is Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But really, you're saying the visibility is so good because that additional uh, panel down the front allows you to see where you're walking around a lot better than you know traditional helmet. All right, so let's give it up for the helmet. Yep. All right, guys. So this is what we have to share with you today. As mentioned before, we're going to be a lot of other conventions across the globe. So if you happen to be in Mexico or London or Canada, come see us. Um, and we're, this is what we've got from the panel today, so we're going to open it up for Q&A and get some of your questions. All right. Now, come on, don't be shy. You can tell how shy we are. <laughs> Here they come. All right, no questions <laughs> after that? All right. I've got one. Oh, That's here right. they come. Great time, right. by the way. Here Hi, they folks. come. <laughs> They're coming in <laughs> full throttle. All right. So, I love the range that the Star Wars Black Series goes in terms of scale. We have everything from the tiny Porg packs all the way to the gigantic First Order TIE Fighter. Um, is there any more plans to make, I, I'm, I'm sure you can't confirm or deny right now, but is there interest in making something smaller scale so that we can kind of expand that story when we're, when we're using the products? Well, what do you mean when you say smaller scale? Like well, we've got a lot of like something like the porgs in in the Black Series. Are we gonna oh. do more porgs? Well, <laughs> I love me some porgs, but um, so uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think there's certainly like Black Series has its established figure scale. We now have our deluxe scale. You're absolutely right. We've done um, expanded things in terms of uh, the creatures as well as through deluxe. There's not necessarily a defined platform. We have to stay with that. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly, if there's the opportunity to, um, you know, expand on other things, where it's, that's something we're certainly not shy from looking at. Uh, six inches, um, definitely about being able to build out that world and, you know, where things fall within the scale of six inch, um, you know, it's finding the appropriate home for them, yeah. so. Great, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you. How will you guys be celebrating D23? Will the team have a presence there on the diorama, or is it just the exclusive that's going to be there, the at Sith D23. Trooper? At, at D23, D23 next at month, D23. right? Um, so D we're not going to have a diorama at D23, um, uh, but there's going to be a lot of great things coming from Disney. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Hey, how's it going? Hey. All right. First part of the question is, uh, how are you guys doing? You having a good con? Weird. Yeah. Are good. you good. guys yeah. having a good con? Yeah. I, yeah. I think so. Is this a favorable weather, or do we like the heat? It's a lot <laughs> better than years prior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's amazing. The fact that I go outside, I'm like, oh, this is where I cool off. It's I'm not crying. <laughs> this is great. Uh, All right. So second question, though, is a little bit more of a of a hardball. Uh oh. Here. So it comes. you that guys did Shadow <laughs> Trooper, Revan. Uh, perhaps a other Janna Solo, all Legends characters. You guys plan to explore that more? I mean, there's, I can't name how many, I would say like 20 more Legends characters that deserve spotlight like that. Uh, I would say that there is no plan not to expand into Legends. <laughs> uh, nice. That's artful. Uh, definitely, you know, the, the, what we face right now is Star Wars is so entertainment rich that it's just a matter of being able to, you know, everyone wants something and 
we love to uh, you know cater to everything. So being able to support new entertainment, being able to support classics, prequels, animated, as well as to do stuff with Legends. Uh, we don't have anything we can share today, but there's definitely going to be uh, stuff for everyone continually. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. We're always um, happy to hear your ideas for what you'd like to see in the booth, though, too. Like, top three. Yeah. Top three yeah. legends. Yeah. Go. Uh, like, top three legends right now. Number one, Kyle Katarn. Yeah. Get that out of the way. Okay. Uh, number two, Darth Malak. Darth Revan, Darth Malak only makes sense. Okay. All right. And the number three is Basila Shah. That was under the pressure. All right. Love the Kotar. All right. Hey, it's all about Kotar, baby. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank Hi. you. Uh, something that's always interested me is uh, for your animated figures such as Ezra Bridger, how do you like decide how to make the f like translate the face from animation into what would be mm. live action, I guess? Mm. Awesome. That's a great question. Mm. question. Mm. I'd love I don't know if Tom I have an answer to. It's really <laughs> just intuitive. You just kind of look at the, you know, what's captured in the animation, trying to look for a specific Facial structures, you know, uh, prominent features. Like with Ezra, he has a specific type of nose. So we're looking for people with, you know, like real life examples of those kinds of noses, the eyes, same kind of thing. So you look for real world examples and implement that into the character. And then, you know, sometimes you, you'll just take inspiration from, you know, any, anywhere, frankly, and just and try, it, try to get the spirit of, of that character in a realistic form. And it's a great conversation that we have back and forth. And we also include Filoni on those, those type of executions. Obviously, he's very passionate about action figures and anything Rebels. So he does love to chime in and, and work, yeah. partner with us, really, when, yep. we, when we're working on those. So it's always a great collaboration. A little bit of artistic license, right? I mean, it, it, they don't exist in the real world. So what would they look like? Mm -hmm. um, but it's a great partnership and, and really just a vision with the folks up here and Filoni together, and we come up with what they look yeah, like and what you end up seeing forth. on shelf. Yeah. Great cool. back and forth on that. Yeah. Are you yeah, happy with how they've looked? Yeah, I okay. really like okay. that figure. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Great. Thank, yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. Yeah, those are Thank fun you. to work on. In the three and three quarter format, uh, Klieg Lars, with wow. possibly even having where you have attachments to the legs, so you could have almost before Attack of the Clones and then after in the chair. <laughs> and then Yoda's house has never been represented other than the 1980s one, which was actually a tree and not his actual house. So you could think about that. So uh, love the suggestions. Um, I'd say definitely in terms of you know playsets, we're certainly you know open to looking at doing more. We did the, uh, the trophy run for Jabba's Palace. Um, two great success. I think a lot of great response on that one. So I think certainly, you know, there's always going to be opportunities to expand on that. And if you guys keep chiming in that you want more and more of it, we'd love to uh, bring yeah. it to you. Yeah. Cool. When's the Bo uh, J Boba Fett uh, helmet coming out? Uh, the what? Boba Fett's coming out in 2020. Okay, it just make sure that the, v the plastic clear part goes all the way to the bottom because most of the previous ones this part was always solid. It wasn't actually see-through. I can confirm that the lens goes all the way to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and on that too, I'm not sure if we said it, but it will be available for pre-order tomorrow too at 5.30, oh, yeah. along yeah. with Hyperreal Luke. So be ready. <laughs> As a youngster, I can <laughs> so tell I, you... I realized that I was going to ask that question at the end and decided I'd give it in now. I, As a youngster, I can tell you I enjoyed nothing more than crushing my figures in the compactor. Uh, the heroes never made it out of there. <laughs> Would there be a future modular build for a Death Star in three and three quarter inch scale or a Cloud City? Because that's where it's at. You knocked it out of the park with the sail barge and the Jabba Palace scenes are amazing. What are your feelings? Yep. Not that anybody doesn't love Cookie Monster or anything. It's just, you know. <laughs> and, and you bring up a great example with the sail barge. I think, you know, now more than ever, there's the opportunities to make these big dream projects come to life. Um, so it's certainly something we don't have anything we can share with you. But again, if there's vocal community that really wants to see that happen, we're certainly yeah. all in for Please making it. Please be loud. Because yeah. I want to do it too. Yeah, be loud. That helps us actually. <laughs> yes, I'm curious. The uh, human skip guards, if you're able to potentially do them in the three pack, even if they're sandwiched between either reissues or some of the aliens you haven't done before? Or is there a licensing reason? Uh, I can say that there is no licensing concern in doing it. It's not a matter of the, the twins from the cantina. So there is certainly the opportunity we can do them. Um, I don't have anything in terms of when those are happening, but 
we know the members of the Skiff Guards and the Jabba's Palace that are missing. Thank you for all that have been very... <laughs> I appreciate it. I think I've seen a few handful of binders like come through and they're like, and you have these seven that are missing. Um, but again, we love it. It's great to see. It's a great conversation to continually have. We have ones that you know we'd love to see updated as well as like Oatsnitskin and stuff, but ultimately being able to get the rest of that crew out, we'd love to do it. We just uh, don't have anything we can share at this time. Yeah, is it a better possibility if, like I said, more creatures, because they tend to sell with kids and stuff like that, a human sandwich between? Um, I think it's certainly something that can help. Human characters, in terms of, they have really cool armor variations, so in terms of how we treat them, um, could definitely be um, really unique, but you know, with it being the vintage collection, it's about celebrating that, that character. So again, if there's a vocal community that wants that figure and we can justify doing it, we'd love to bring it into the line. All right. Hello, all. Easy question for you today. The Hasbro Pulse T-shirts are hot. How do I get one? You can have mine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> are the personal boys? This team will give you the shirt too, off their back. <laughs> Thank you. Keep doing the great work. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm a big fan of the 2008 to 2013 animated styling of the Clone Wars 3.75 figures. Is there any chance you guys could ever go back to that kind of hybrid between the movie reel and the animated stuff you did for a re-release or a new line, perhaps with a new season? I feel like we'd need entertainment to justify doing something like that. But, mm. oh, wait. <laughs> um, nothing that we can share <laughs> today, but uh, it's you know a very valid piece of entertainment that's uh, coming. We're certainly all excited for it. So um, you know, I think that ended up being a really nice crossover into the vintage collection and really is what ended up inspiring us to do a lot more of those characters in the Black Series. So absolutely stay tuned. We, we hear it. We'd love to do it. <laughs> Piggybacking off of that for the, uh, the Clone Wars figures, uh, Duchess 18. I would like that a lot. Uh, also, are there any uh, plans for new Resistance figures beyond the original couple, four or five that came out? We, we don't have any plans right now for any new resistance figures, um, but we're certainly still excited about the series. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Yep. This is our Again. last guy. One more. Can we take uh, yeah. this? is our last guy right here. You guys been in line. Can we do the two? No, the that, was, that guy was, he was helping us cut the line. All right. All right. No, All right we got you. <laughs> no worries. Uh, thank you guys for taking the time. Um, obviously, for all of us here, uh, we love the stuff that you guys put out. Um, I'm shocked that it took this long uh, to, for me to get up here to ask this question, but. Uh, Throw us a bone here. Where is Zeb? Where is Zeb? We want Zeb. We want Zeb. We want Zeb. We want Zeb. We got one figure we left. We want Zeb. We, <laughs> we got we one Zeb. figure left. Yes. I see you notice. Um, can't speak. At all. To, at all. <laughs> but we know that Zeb is missing. We are aware of that. You just brought it to our attention. Thank you. Um, we'll see what we can make yeah. happen. There's a lot of good conversation about Zeb, so we know we're looking for the right opportunity. And stay tuned. Zeb's unfortunately a bit larger than most of our yeah, traditional characters. True. So in order to be able to do Zeb, we'd need to have almost like an alternative way of doing larger yes. characters. Almost so. like a deluxe version, like oh. a Grievous. Oh like. Holy what um, a great idea. Do you need a job? You know, uh, just kind of. Idea guy. I think he solved it. <laughs> just I think throwing he that out did there. Solve All right. it. Okay. All right. So. I think anyway. we. Thanks so much for your Thank guys. Thank you so question. much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Actually, All right, that's it. All right. just to All kind right. of wrap up, we just want to say thanks to everybody. Thanks for coming. Thanks for supporting us and um, for loving the figures. It keeps us happy to keep doing them. It keeps us employed. It's great. Um, yeah. so if you guys want to see a Boba Fett helmet, we'll have it downstairs in the booth mm -hmm. right after the show. Mm -hmm. We also have all of our five-inch figures that are going to be making yeah. their way into the case. So 